Good morning. God is still good, though. He knows what he's doing. So we are thankful, grateful, thankful <laughs> that he is still God, even in the midst of all that we see. He is still God. So how's everybody on this Monday morning? I pray you had a wonderful weekend in the Lord, just enjoying the goodness and the grace and the mercies of God. He is so awesome in all that he does. This morning, I've been up this morning since I guess maybe a little bit before four this morning, asking the Lord to please watch over the, the earth, even as the weather <laughs> continues to look bad and be bad. We're just asking God to have mercy, have mercy. We know by no means are we worthy of it, but we do mm. ask God to please have mercy upon us, even as the weather continues to pass through. And not only us, but all of those, all of those that are uh, within weather radius, let me just say that. Good morning, Moore. Glad to have you. Thank you for sharing the video. Good morning, Sister Zara. Glad to have you too. Uh, but we're asking God to just let the weather kind of pass over. I know what they say, but I know God is still the creator, the sustainer of all things. So we just going to trust in the Lord. We're going to trust in the Lord. All right. So I pray all is well. Let me introduce myself. My name is Glenda Archangel Jones, and you're with the Matthew 633 Seek God First Ministry Bible Study, where we study the Word of God. I want to encourage you to get your Bibles and your pens and your pad and be ready to write because God is still speaking. I want to encourage you in that. I also want to say happy birthday to all of our April birthday babies, and this will be our last lesson in the month of April. So I pray for those of you that had an April um, birthday, I pray you had a wonderful, wonderful birthday in the Lord. Uh, also, happy anniversary to all of those celebrating anniversaries in this month. Good morning, Patsy. Glad to have you. Uh, I pray that you had a wonderful, all of you that are cel that celebrated or celebrating in the month of April uh, anniversaries. And I, if today is your day, I pray God will bless you exceedingly abundantly. So as I just said, today is our last lesson in the month of December. Because when we meet again at the Lord's So Spare on Wednesday, we'll be in the month of May. Good morning, Miss Sue. Glad to have you. We'll be in the month of May. I'm like, Lord, how time is flying. <laughs> but to God be the glory for the things he does. He still has life in our bodies. So we're just grateful that he's allowing us uh, the end of this month. We're so, so grateful and prayerfully to see the beginning of May. <laughs> All right. Um, I do have a few things when I was finishing up on Matthew's mail. I do have a few things here. Uh, that I'd like to share with you. I got this card. Let me see where it's from. American Kidney Foundation. And it says, thank you. Ooh, let me see. Open now. And thank you. I'm going to have to change computers on uh, YouTube. I noticed y'all slacking a little bit. Let me see if I can read some of this. They wrote me a whole letter. It says, from the American Kidney Fund. Dear friend, I hope you and your loved ones have stayed well during these challenging times. It's hard to believe it has been a year since we received your last gift of $20. Since then, thanks to your generosity, we have helped more than 73,000 kidney failure patients in need in the U.S. And that in, includes 1,494 patients in Louisiana. But we still need your help. Your gift not, uh, now will let us assist kidney failure patients in crisis who have exhausted all other resources, just as important. You will, yeah, you will help us continue our free kidney health programs that help prevent this deadly disease. Please reply today and let me know. I can count on your continued support at, the, at this crucial time. Your gift will save lives. With warmest thanks, LaVorn Burton, President and CEO, P.S. I promise we will use the gift wisely. We spend 97 cents of every dollar you give on patients and programs. And let's see, we got another card here. There's some stuff on the back, but we won't worry about that. This is 
Special Olympics blessed in the heart, y'all. Look how cute. <laughs> he got a medal. <laughs> Says, dear friend, I recently wrote to you about the 2024 Special Olympic Louisiana Summer Games. Your gift can help pay for our athletic sports equipment and so much more. If you've already sent your donation, thank you so much. If not, please send your most generous gift. Um, it's got $35, $53, and $70 to make summer games possible. Thank you for believing in our ath athletes. John Gazzardo, President and CEO. Uh, P.S. Please be as generous as you can so our athletes have an amazing summer game. Thank you for accepting people as they are. Special Olympics. I just think it's so adorable. And then I also got an invitation from, it's, a, let me see, Saint Labrie. We give to them two Indian school simply because we are not uh, partial in any way. And they sent me a picture of the class that's graduating this year. They're graduating. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And they also sent me an invitation to the graduation. I, I don't think I'll be able to attend, but they did send it to me. And they say the class quote is, your future is only as good as you make it. The class flowers are purple, zinnia, and class colors, gold and purple. Um, it says, St. Labrie is such a well-instructed school that has taught me values that will take me in life. This Somebody wrote this. So <laughs> the resources and support we get here at St. Labrie are very helpful for the students making decisions for after high school. I'm very lucky to be able to be in such an amazing learning environment. They prepare you for life after high school and make it really easy for whatever path you choose to go. Gratefully, Kate, and she's the senior class president and student, student council president. So she wrote a little note on the back of their graduation class. I thought that was just so neat. So anyway, I just thought I'd share those with you and also let you know what we're giving this month. I know it's late, but I promise you, I, I just hadn't written the check yet, but I got it all together. Uh, American Cancer Society, $50. Arthritis Foundation, $30. Feeding America, $50. And Guideposts, y'all know that's that little book that you get and you read. And I have been reading it as a, uh, at work for um, just as a little devotional 15-minute break time. Um, $23.99. So it, the total is $153.99. And I did tell you all we were going to give a little less simply because I'm trying to save up money to get Bibles. So just be in prayer with me that we will continue on that path. Um, and those are the people that we're gonna give to in the month of April. We're still gonna give because I believe in giving because the more you give, the more God will give to you. Good morning, Betty. Good morning, Aquanetta. Glad to have you all this morning. So uh, those are the people we're gonna give to and those are the thank yous and acknowledgements and all of that that we've given so again, I thank you for your giving. It is because of your giving we're able to bless others. Uh, I also want to thank you personally on a personal level. Not that I'm not thanking on a personal level for the giving, but I believe God will, will thank you in that behalf of, for your giving. I believe that God will bless your socks off for your giving. But I also want to thank you for your consistent prayer uh, for me and my family. Uh, it is just overwhelm me sometimes to know how people have been praying for me. And I've had people to uh, inbox me, to stop me, just to say, I'm praying for you. And so it encouraged me. So I do want to just say thank you. And thank you for those of you that are consistent in following. Thank you, thank you, because it allows me to be encouraged, but it also lets me know that you love the Lord and you love his word. And for me, that means a whole lot because when I get to heaven, I really would love to hear the Lord say, well done. <laughs> but even with or without, I'm still gonna continue the work God has set my hands to do. 
uh, good morning to you. But I'm so thankful that you all continue to uh, steadfast follow and prayerfully. You've been learning. I know I've been learning some new things, even in the word myself. And again, thank you for your giving. Again, thank you for your prayers. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I was just talking to the Lord. I think it was last night. It could have been this morning. I don't know, but I think it was last night. And um, I was saying, Lord, you know, some days I'm really tired and I'm really weary. And he said, if you just keep doing what I call you to do, I'll keep giving you the strength to do it. And so it is because of prayers. I'm telling you, the prayers of the righteous are very much. So thank you, thank you. All right. So that's it. I put the announcements. I got all the stuff out the way. Thanks, thanks and all that. I told y'all where we were giving. So that's it for the announcements. I'm tired of the lesson this morning. Lot and his daughters live in a wilderness cave. Lot and his daughters live in a wilderness cave. Genesis 19, 30 to 32. We're going to be doing three verses, but they might be a little entailed, I think. I don't think the lesson is that short, even with three verses today. But okay, uh, let's pray. And then I think I, yeah, yeah, I think that's it, huh? Let's pray, <laughs> and then we'll get off into review, and then into, thank you for the uh, thumbs up, and then into the lesson, okay? Father God, here we are before you, Lord, to say thank you. We thank you once again for another day. We thank you, Lord God, that the weather has been very, fairly mild, so we're grateful compared to what they say. But then, Lord, we know that there are those that of us that are praying, even in reference to the weather. And so we thank you, God, for keeping the weather so far at bay. But Lord, nevertheless, we will continue to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And Father, since we're there, we do lift up all of those that have been devastated by weather, by rain, by tsunamis, by floods, by hurricanes, by natural death, whatever the case may be, Father, we lift them up before you. And we pray, Lord God, that you will just move before them and allow them to know that you're still God, you're still in control, you're still watching over your works to perform. And we say thank you. And then, Lord God, we thank you for these Matthew 633 God seekers. And we speak miracles, signs, and wonders over their lives, dear Father. Not only that, but we pray, Father, that they will see each little, and no matter how small it is, little or big miracle that you work in their lives. God, because they've been faithful to your word that says to seek you first in the morning. And because, Father, we seek you first, you said all of these things will be added unto us. So we thank you in advance for the graces and the mercies and the blessings and the love and the overflow that you have for us. God, we thank you even right now. And then, Father God, we pray for families this morning. We lift them up, dear God. We pray even right now that you would bless families, dear God. Bless the high priest in the home, the head of the home, dear God. Encourage, give them wisdom, give them knowledge and understanding. And Father, we pray for the wife that's called alongside to help, that you give her a passionate heart, a compassionate heart, dear Father, a heart after you, dear God, and a, a heart that will hear her husband's heart, but not only her husband's, but her children. We lift up the children, we pray for the mind of Christ. We pray, God, that the parents will continue to lead and to guide their children into all truths. And we pray, Father, that the children will walk in the truth, dear God. We are praying, Lord God, for our children, even right now, that you'll bring them in a right relationship with you. Father, we know of children that have learned to love you, even with our parents who know anything about you. So, Father, if that's the case, we're just asking you, Lord God, to send us to send someone to, uh, to plant seeds into their lives so that they one day, too, will surrender their lives to you. And then, Lord God, we pray, dear Father, for this entire world. We pray, Lord, that your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. We thank you, Father, for what you have done because you've been watching over your works to perform. We praise and worship with God for what you're going to do. Your word says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our hearts the great and mighty things that you have prepared for us. And we say thank you. And Father, we bless you even right now, Lord. We remember all of those that have health challenges, dear Father. We pray for healing and wholeness because your word says by the stripes of Jesus, they're already healed. We pray for those that have lost loved ones, dear Father. We thank you, God, that you are still a God that will replace the heaviness with joy, dear Father. We say thank you because, God, you're in and around and through everything that we are concerned in. And we thank you, Father, that you have such a blessing upon all of our lives. That when we go out into places, men and women, boys and girls, see the light in us. 
but it's not about us, Father. We've come to the realization it's all about you, and we thank you for using this earth and dirt, dear God, for your glory. We thank you. We are so grateful to be called your children, the sheep of your pasture. Father, we praise you. And Lord God, we lift up all of those, dear Father, that are in high places. We pray for the mind of Christ, Father. We pray for our president and vice president. We pray for governors and mayors. We pray for judicial branches. We pray for ministers. We pray for bishops and priests. Father, we pray, dear God, that you give them the mind of Christ. Thoughts after you, dear Father. We pray, Lord, a heart of compassion that will be for the people, dear God, the love of the people. And then, Father God, we pray, Lord, for those that are without in any area, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, mentally, relationally. Father, we pray for increase in all of those areas. Meet them where they are, dear God. Bring them where you want them to be as you continue to pour into their lives. And we say thank you. And now, Lord, as these Matthew 633 God seekers continue in your word, Father, Continue leading and guiding and teaching. And Father, continue giving us a hunger and a thirst for your word and your righteousness. Dress us, Father, in the full arm of God that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Cover us with your blood that as we walk through this earth, dear Father, we will demonstrate the righteousness, the love, and the uh, grace and mercies of Jesus the Christ. Father, we pr thank you and praise you, Lord God, for your word because your word is true. We ask even right now, Lord God, that you would speak. Have your way today. Tell us what we need to hear. Father, bring us to where you want us to be. We've lived this life, and a lot of us, including myself, have messed up a lot of things. But we're still trusting you, Father, to use us and to bring things into divine order. And we will be so careful, as always, to say thank you for all things. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Erica. Glad to have you this morning. All right. So as I said, I've entitled the lesson, Lot and his daughters live. Oh, YouTube didn't froze up, but y'all can still hear me. Live in a wilderness cave. I promise YouTube I'm going to change <laughs> y'all's uh, laptop because I think this is my older laptop I've been using. So I'm going to swap them out so I can put y'all on a newer laptop that had more uh, life to it. I think this one is probably filled with all kind of information. <laughs> it's on the overflow of YouTube is. But it's okay. We all good. Y'all can hear me. So that's all that's needed. I still look the same. <laughs> all right. So we'll be talking again today, as I said, Genesis 19, verses 30 to 32. And thank you for the thumbs up. On Wednesday, we talked about verse 27. And we learned in the previous chapter, Abraham had bargained with the Lord on behalf of the city of Sodom, where his nephew Lot lived. The Lord had revealed his intentions to destroy the city, but he had agreed to spare it if as many as 10 righteous people could be found there. Genesis 18, 32, there wasn't 10 found, wasn't 10 found. Knowing that Abraham returned home from the place where he stood with the Lord, looking toward the valley and the condemned cities, Abraham now returns to the same spot the next morning, not knowing what he will find when he looks across the plain. As you remember, Abram, Abraham and the Lord were speaking, looking at Sodom. And the Lord told Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And the reason why he told him that, that's what he does as friend. He called Abraham a friend. And so he said, I have to tell him that simply because he will tell the story from generation to generation. So he says, I have to let him know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And so he and Abraham talked, but the next morning, and, and you know, some of the commentators said, I'm sure he couldn't sleep all night because he knew what was going to happen. But the next morning, it says he got up very early and he went and he stood in the same spot that he and the Lord had just talked to the day before. <clears throat> the following verses will describe the scene. One can only imagine the horror Abraham would have felt when seeing that the town where his nephew lived has become a firestorm. Now, y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I told you, good imagination. 
But I can only imagine to go and to look at a place where a loved one of mine lived and to see it's, it's demolished, it's nothing left. And not knowing if he was destroyed in the fire or not, simply because there was not 10 righteous. Then in the review verse, in our, our other review verse, verse 28, after securing from the Lord a promise not to destroy the city where his nephew lives, if 10 righteous people can be found there in Genesis 18, 32, Abraham, of course, as we said, returned the next morning to the same place where he and the Lord stood. And what he sees is smoke. Abraham sees so much smoke rising from the valley where Sodom and Gomorrah once had been that it looks like the smoke of a furnace rising into the air. I'm sorry, baby, it must have froze. <laughs> I'm so sorry. YouTube, I'm looking at it, has frozen. Let me see if I tap on it. Nothing happening, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but you can come over to Facebook if you have Facebook, if it's not, if you can't hear me on YouTube. Uh, but I think you can hear me. It's just the picture is frozen. Uh, Abraham would have understood, of course, that the Lord had destroyed the cities and the region. He would have understood that the Lord did not find even 10 righteous men there. He may not have known yet, though, that the Lord did spare his nephew Lot and Lot's two daughters in the town of Zor. Well, I've lost the screen altogether on YouTube. I don't know if they can still hear me. Uh, Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, y'all. Right there. They're in the town of Zor. Let me go over to YouTube and see what y'all seeing. If y'all see anything, let me get over there. Hold on. Uh-oh. Pitch you go. Let's see. Uh, if I can get into. I'm trying to see if y'all hearing anything. I'm sorry, y'all, hold on. No, y'all not hearing. It went off anyway. Okay. Mm -mm. Sorry about that, Benny. And Aquanetta and Erica and all who else was watching. <laughs> sorry about that. I can see if I can get it back on, but I, I don't think so. I think it's this computer. It's just old. Well, we won't worry about it. I'll, I'll send it over. I've learned to send it over to YouTube, so I'll send it over there. Um, this is a, an important, often overlooked aspects of the truth of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham worried that God's wrath was too extreme. Remember, he did because he was up there talking to God, and he called God's character into check. And so then he had to remind himself of who he was talking to. <laughs> Problems with YouTube, yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to change out this this uh, older uh, laptop. I have a newer laptop, and I, I was using the older one because it was easy access. But I'm I'm gonna have to change them out. So, but thank you. Yeah, it, it finally eventually went offline. Uh, so Abraham worried that God's wrath was too extreme. The lack of righteous people proved this was untrue. There was not 10 righteous people. Abraham was likely worried about the fate of his nephew Lot. God's provision to rescue Lot proved that to be unfound as well. God was still faithful because God found the righteous. And Lot was that righteous one. Believe it or not, he was living like he was unrighteous. But he was righteous. It's kind of like I tell you. People can be saved and still have a carnal mind and live carnally because they choose not to do the will of God. But not to say they haven't accepted Christ as their personal Savior. This truth not only teaches us that God will judge sin and evil, but that he will do some in ways uh, which are both fair, and just. Even though limited human beings cannot see all of the details, God does. See, we're just looking on the outside. God is looking outside and inside. 
He knows it all, so he knows that he's just and he's fair in whatever decision he makes because he knows even the end of the story, if you will. We only know in part. See through a glass dimly, but God sees the whole thing. So whenever he judges, he knows that his judgment is just and fair. This makes the truth of Sodom and Gomorrah critically relevant to the famous truth of Abraham and his son Isaac. When God commands Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, which we're going to talk about in Genesis chapter 22, we need to remember the context of this very truth. God proved to Abraham that he would not only act justly, but that he would provide for Abraham's welfare in ways Abraham himself had not considered. I think that's me. Good morning. <laughs> this earned trust, not blind faith, is what drives Abraham's obedience in that upcoming event. And we're going to talk about it in Genesis 22. And then in our final re uh, review verse, verse 29, this verse restates what Abraham learned only later. God saved Lot and Lot's daughter because he remembered Abraham. Let me just tell you, the prayers you're praying even right now, they're not going in vain. God never forgets. So even now, he will remember, even when we forget. God even saved Lot's wife, at, at least his wife, at least temporarily, though she died during the escape uh, due to her own disobedience because the angel told her, don't look back. Whatever you do, don't look back. And the scripture kind of, uh, well, commentators tell us that she not only looked back, but she looked back with her heart of longing to be in that place, corrupt as it was. When the Lord delivers us from the things of this world, and he does it little by little, but we don't look back as if we've missed something. You know, I, like I told you, I used to club Friday, Saturday, not Sunday, but Friday, Saturday. But once I came out, I didn't look back, and I didn't think I lost anything. Matter of fact, I thought I gained because I wasn't so tired all the time. I wasn't beat, worn out, headaches, sometimes throwing up. I, I didn't feel like I lost anything, so I didn't. So this is what the Lord says. Once he delivers us out of things, don't look back because that's what Satan has a tendency to. He'll make us look back, and we keep looking back until eventually we long for it. And after we long for it, eventually we'll find ourselves back in the pit, if, if I might use that word, back in the pit where we were. So here we find uh, Lot's wife looked back and they told her, don't look back. Whatever you do, don't look back. And she looked back. So God tried to save her, but she chose not to be saved. You know, it's one thing about the Lord. He's a gentleman. He will allow you to make your choices, be it good or be it bad. He will allow you. The Holy Spirit is such a gentleman. He lives in the inside of us, but he will allow us to make the choices. He'll always let us know the truth through either uh, someone that may be preaching or teaching or uh, maybe a friend or a mother, or father, but sometimes he even speak to us himself. But he will always let us know the truth. So when we make the wrong decisions, we can never, as believers, say we didn't know the truth. God did indeed overthrow and thoroughly destroy the region in which uh, Lot lived for their overwhelming sinfulness. But God saved Lot only because of the prayers of his uncle, Abraham. God's act of rescue, even in his judgment, would serve as evidence to Abraham that God would keep his promises to Abraham in the years to come. What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and in the Jordan, remember that all those five cities were supposed to be destroyed. Zor was not destroyed simply because Lot wanted to go to Zor. Now believe me, Zor was just as corrupt as all those cities in the Jordan Valley. 
Now, why Lot would want to go there, I have no idea. He did not want to leave his lifestyle. Yes, I do have an idea. He did not want to leave his lifestyle. Sodom and Gomorrah were bigger cities. But Zohar had the same. Remember, we talked about it. All five of those cities in the Jordan Valley were corrupt. God destroyed four of them. And later on, we're going to see he destroyed Zohar also. Because Zohar was in the number to be destroyed in the Jordan Valley. So what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah has to be remembered with interpreting God's command to Abraham in chapter 22 to sacrifice his son Isaac. God has proven that he will not only act properly, if I might say that, but that he will work out all things for good in ways Abraham never could have foreseen. And you know he does because he has a ram in the bush. I just continue to remind you, and I live by it now. I'm so thankful that the Lord has planted this in my heart, and I live by it. Romans 8, 28. Father, I don't care how bad it looks. That's what I tell the Lord. I don't care how bad it feels. I know you're still working it together for my good and for your glory. Thank you for the hearts. And so I continually live on that because that's what God is doing. He's molding, making, and shaping us for our good and his glory. It is that earn trust through experience with God's providence, which will lead Abraham to place his faith in God should do for us too during such a confusing time. Share the video, thumbs up, like, and tag, if you will. All right, get your Bibles if you, mind, if you don't mind. Um, turn to chapter 19. We're almost at the end of chapter 19, verse 30, and we'll start there. That's the name Carver this morning. Very, very good. I must say that man know he made good God. Anyway, I don't know what he does. One day I'll find out. Maybe before Jesus comes. I'm giving y'all a chance to get your Bibles. That's y'all know this is what I do. I kind of take a little break, give y'all a chance to get your Bibles. Get to sip on my little good coffee. <laughs> and we get into back into today's lesson. That was review today's lesson. Uh, verse 30. Then Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountains. Now you see, or 633, y'all, 633, praise be to God, 633. For those of you that are Matthew 633, God see, because you know what we do. Thank you, Aquanetta. For those of you that's new to the page, we set our alarms, our watches, everything we have at 633 in the a.m., 633 in the p.m., because Matthew 633 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Thank you, Miss Sue. Thank you, Betty. We want the added to but God tells us how to get the added to. He says, seek him first. And then also it's a good witness to too. Thank you for the hearts because someone will want to know. People be nosy. Why you're long going off and you can tell them. I'm a Matthew 633 God seek. I've chosen by the act of my will, the aid of the Holy Spirit to seek God's face first. So I want to encourage you to do that also. So let's stop and pray and then we'll get into today's lesson. Father God, here we are before you once again to say thank you. We thank you for your word, dear God, because your word is true. We see the faithfulness of God. Father, and I know people think that grace and mercy came in when Jesus was here. But we see your grace and your mercies being extended to Lot and his family, dear Father. And so, God, we thank you that you are God yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you, Father, that you change not. And whatever you've done in the past, you are still doing today. And so, God, we're grateful. We thank you for your word because your word is true. And we just thank you that your Holy Spirit will continue rightly dividing the word of truth for us. And we bless you and praise you, love you, and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So verse 30, then Lot went up to Zohar and dwelt in the mountains. Went up out, I'm sorry, out of Zohar and dwelt in the mountains. You see, now y'all. I'm so thankful I'm not God because I want to go right right about now and slap lot. All that time God was telling him to go to the mountains. He couldn't go. Now he gonna leave so go to the mountains. <laughs> and his two daughters were with him for he was afraid to dwell in Zor. But why he wanted to go there so bad? Y'all know y'all that's been found. Y'all know a few verses ago. What did he do? He stood there and talked to the Lord himself and told him, listen, I'm tired. I can't go up in the mountain. 
I don't want to go in the mountain because something might devour me up there. And here, thank you, Patsy. And here we find him now. He want to go to the mountains. You see, I'm so glad I'm not God. Because I just struck him dead. For even the thought. <laughs> and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. 31. Now the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old, and there is no man on earth to come in to us, as is the custom of all the earth. 32. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. Share the video, thumbs up, like, and tag. Scripture begins with, then Lot went up out of Zor, which lay in the plain. Remember, Zor was supposed to be destroyed. And therefore, when he went from there to the mountain, it was by a climb. That was the same climb God was telling him he could make. But no, I want to go to Zor. And they dwelt in the mountains, which the Lord had directed him to go to before. I'm trying to tell you. But he was unwilling to and chose Zor and desire he might flee there and that they might be spared. When God told him, oh no, I want to go to Zor. See how we can be so disobedient. We hear the voice of God. God is talking to a lot. We hear the voice of God and we still think we should do it our way. But now he likes God's advice for him better than his own now. And therefore, he took himself to the mountains where he might think himself safest and where he continued to live. We don't know why Lot and his daughters became dis dissatisfied with Zor or why the people of Zor became dissatisfied with them. Yet, for some, some reason, they left the small city of Zor and went to the mountains and dwelt in a cave. Lot and his two daughters were with him. His wife was turned, remember, into a pillar of salt. And these two were all of his family that were saved from the destruction. For he, Lot, was afraid to dwell in Zor, it being near to Sodom. Remember, that was all in the Jordan Valley. The smoke of that city and the rest might not only be terrible but troublesome to Lot. And the tremor of the earthquake, there was earthquakes also, might continue and reach as far as Zor. So now he's afraid to stay in Zor because he's afraid that it will continue to burn, in which it will. And proceeding, the waters to rise, because remember, all of this became uh, a lake, what they call now the Dead Sea, they believe. The waters to rise and overflow the plain, which formed the lake where the city stood he might fear they would reach Zor and swallow up that also. Especially his fears were increased when he found the inhabitants were as wicked as those of the other cities and were unreformed by the judgment on them. In other words, Lot has now, which he should have known, all of these little cities are in the valley. He should have known, thank you for the hearts, that this, this little Zor was just as corrupt as the big Sodom and Gomorrah. Thank you for the hearts. But he moves to this place, and he should have known. If you have little cities that live under, you know, big cities, then eventually the little becomes like the big, because guess what? They have a tendency, most times, in a big city, you have a tendency for people that will they'll move outside, like Houston. You know, you have people that will live in the cities, and then they decide, oh, no, 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 and they move outside. Has anything changed when they went in the cities partying and going on? No, they just bring it to another place and began building other places that will accommodate what they want. So that's what Zor was. It was just a little city like Sodom. And so now Lot is afraid because he's afraid that the Lord will destroy Zor, which he will, uh, like he did Sodom and Gomorrah because of its wickedness, because he sees the same thing going on in Zor. So he might fear that, uh, that a like shower of fire would descend on them and destroy them as it had the rest, though it had been spared for a while at his intercession. That's why Zor was saved. Because God came down to destroy all of the Jordan Valley. 
all of the five cities. But Zor was spared because Lot requested to go there. I'm trying to tell you when you're a believer in Christ, just because of your presence, it will spare others. Now, they don't have to believe you, but I'm here to tell you, because of your presence in a family, it will spare the whole family. Because of your presence in a, thank you for the horse, because of your presence in a car, it will spare the whole car in an accident. Because of your presence. And this is what has happened here. Because of Lot's presence in Zor, Zor was not destroyed, not at that particular time. But according to the Jewish writers, Zor remained but one year after Sodom's destruction. And then it was destroyed. Lot was gone, and so God had no reason to let it stay. Sin had abided all through the Jordan Valley, and God destroyed it all. And now they say it's known as the Dead Sea, and nothing can grow in it. Share the video, thumbs up, like, and tag. Now the firstborn said to the younger daughter, that is the firstborn of those two, or the elder of them. Now, if Lot had other daughters that were married in Sodom, it is probable they were older than either of these. Now, at Aben Ezra, it's a cyclopedia, that says that Lot had another wife. That's not scripture. I'm telling you that came from an encyclopedia. We have people that study the word of God or delved in the word of God. And so I'm just sharing with you some of the things. I'm not telling you that scripture, so don't go tell nobody. Oh, the Bible said Lot had another. No, no, this is a, a cyclopedia that says that Lot had another wife who died first. And these daughters... Uh, by his, these are the daughters by his second wife, the one that is the pillar of salt who died. But they're saying that Lot was mad before, but, and he had daughters with that wife. So that's why they mentioned daughters that could have been older than these daughters. So the following idea is made by the eldest of them to the youngest. The older one is talking to the youngest. For all of those that are uh, the older siblings, let me just say, use wisdom when you talk to your younger siblings. Use wisdom. Don't just tell them anything foolish. Use wisdom. And the scripture says, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. Don't talk to your younger siblings. I know we have young and older siblings that are adults. I, I tell you, thank you for the hearts. You used to make me laugh all the time when my daddy, who was probably then about 80-something years old, and his sister was maybe, uh, you know, younger 80s, late 70s. And he would he would just tickle me when he said, I'm going over to see my little sister. <laughs> and I'm thinking, my God, my God, little sister. But it was still his little sister. That didn't change. You know, I'm still my sister's little sister. That didn't change. As old as we get, it still doesn't change. But I do want to encourage you to use wisdom because this is the oldest sister talking to the youngest here. And as being bolder, having more authority and a greater influence to persuade. The oldest, you know, great influence. That's what we're saying. When the oldest one, uh, the oldest one starts to live, make sure your life is pure and holy. Because guess what? The younger ones are watching. So be careful. The oldest daughter said, our father is old. If, and listen at this, y'all. I was just disappointed when she said he's old. If he was 50 years of age when he was taken captive by the kings, remember when the five king was the four king. Good morning, Lorraine. Glad to have you. Remember when the kings came in and these same cities in Jordan, they went through and ravaged and took everything. So he was 50 years old then when he was captured. Uh, and it's said by the Jewish chronologicals, he must have been 65 since the destruction of Sodom was 15 years after he was taken the first time. 65. His oldest daughter saying, our father is now old. I'm crushed. She called him that old. <laughs> but the oldest daughter said that. So the oldest daughter said, our father is old and there is no man on the earth to come into us 
as is the custom of all the earth, to marry them, cohabitate with them, and procreate children of them, which was the common way of propagation man, uh, of mankind in the earth. So in other words, the oldest daughter is talking to his, her younger sister, and she's telling us daddy's getting old. But we will have to do something because there's nobody. Because what happened is they are running. Remember, they ran from Sodom and Gomorrah. They saw Sodom and Gomorrah being, well, not really saw it, but they knew it was happening because the angels told them. So they, they didn't see it because they couldn't look back. But they knew that Sodom and Gomorrah and all the plain would be burned up. So they're thinking their father moved to Zor. They know that in Zor, there are, there's corruption just like there was in Sodom and Gomorrah. So they're saying, no, we can't get any of these men. And there's no other men left on the world, in the earth, because they seen all of this plain being burned up. So now they think there's no other men left on the earth beside those that are corrupt in Zor. And they know their father would not want them to propagate with those. They thought the whole world was destroyed by fire, as it has been by a flood. They had heard the truth of the flood destroying the earth. Now they heard that this time the world would be burned up by fire. They thought that in that day, that was the fire. The whole earth was burned up, except, you know, the place where they were in the mountains. They understood it would be more, no more consumed by water, but they had been told it would be by fire. And believe me, they weren't lied to because this earth will be burned up by fire. But that's, they've heard the scriptures. And so this is, they think, what has happened. And they imagined the time was now come. And this was the case. They also knew that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by fire and that by this time the fire had reached to Zor, thank you for the horse, and had consumed that. But the whole earth was destroyed and not a man left and their father, I mean, but their father. So remember, I told you about a year later, Zor was consumed also because Zor was corrupt. So they also knew that now Zor has been consumed with fire. So there's no other man left on the earth because they had heard, we've all heard it too, that the earth will be burned up and there'll be nothing here. And that's the fire they thought that had happened. The whole earth, all of the men, all of the women, all of the children had been burned up. And yet it wasn't the whole earth, it was the plain the Jordan Plain that was burned up because that section was corrupt. And so God burned it up. Judgment. But they thought this was the fire that they had heard about from uh, their uncle Abraham. That the earth would be totally destroyed by fire. No more water, but by fire. And so this is what they thought. And there was not another person on there. Remember now, they're in a cave living by themselves with their father. They're not coming down back to the city and visiting and doing any of this because all that's been burned up. They're in the cave by themselves for years. <laughs> so they think it's no one left but their father and therefore thought it could, listen at this y'all, it could be excusable for them and lawful for them to take the following method to repopulate the world or else they supposed there were none in the land. They had to have their father because, you know, this is going to justify because we don't have another man to sleep, to sleep with. And we need to repopulate <laughs> because the earth has been destroyed by fire. So we need to repopulate the earth. No one in the land of Canaan, not of any of their kindreds and relations, for they might be ignorant of Abraham and his family, simply because Lot, remember, left Abraham long years ago. Or however, of any good man that they knew of, that they could be joined in marriage. The inhabitants of Zor, they had just left, 
They were as wicked as any and therefore could not think of living with them in such a near relations, although they were burned up too. But all this is not a sufficient excuse for engineering and executing what is after told to us. They should have inquired of their father who could have informed them better. Y'all, when you don't know something, ask. And especially you can ask your father in heaven. <laughs> but you can ask your earthly father too. But I'm just saying, you can ask to find out. Now, the, this oldest daughter has already made up in her mind there's not a man left in this earth. Has already made up in her mind she's going to sleep with her father. When all she had to do is say, Father, sister and I have been talking. We know that we should repopulate the earth. We've seen the fire. And that Father Lot, who knows the truth, because he's been taught the truth, could have explained to them what was going on. But no, <laughs> they didn't even ask their daddy. Share the video, thumbs up, tag and like. The older daughter said, come, let us make our father uh, drink wine, meaning to excess, so as to be enumerated with it and not know what he did. Lot and his family lost everything in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Even so, and remember, Lot was very rich, the scripture said, even so, they quickly had a stock of wine. Now, of all things to be stocked up on. Going on. This wine might have been brought with them from Sodom with other provisions for their refreshment and support, or it may be from Zor, where they uh, furnished for themselves a quantity for their supporting in the mountains. Personally, I think it's from Zor, because remember the scripture says that when Lot uh, was moving kind of slow, the angels said, you don't have time to get anything. You just have to get your family and get out. So I, personally, I think well, as they were in Zohar, they got all what they needed. And the scripture does say, especially wine. The oldest daughter then said, we will lie with him, their father Lot, that we, preserve, that we may preserve the lineage of our father, have children by him, and propagate and preserve the human species. I, I, I'm going on. This they might think lawful. Uh, such insensuous relations be uh, being you usual among their neighbor neighbors the arabs in other words while they lived not in sodom and gomorrah because the men slept with other men there but they had neighbors the arabs and they slept with close kin neighbors and relatives they did the arabs uh would say something but it's, i can't i'm online and especially when there seemed to them to be a necessity for it. It may be this did not arise uh, from a spirit of uncleanliness or a brutish lust prevailed in them, having been religiously educating and had preserved their chastity among such an impure generation as the men of Sodom. In other words, they were um, uh, not married. They had never been with the man, even though they were, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, we use the word engaged now, but that's not what they used back then. But they had never slept with these men. And so they were chaste women. They were still, remember, when Lot went out to offer, these men that were trying to get the angels, Lot went out and offered his two daughters, who said they'd never been, they'd never slept with a man, take my daughters. They should have took them then. <laughs> God forgive me, Lord. This might have arisen from an eager desire after the Messiah. Now, y'all, listen at this. They might hope would spring from them. Now, they had heard about becoming Messiah, these girls. Remember, I told you, Lot was raised up knowing the word because his uncle was Abraham. His daddy died years and years. And Abraham took Lot under his bosom and taught him the word. And he taught his girls the word. He just didn't live the life, but he taught them. But anyway, so now they're thinking that uh, if we don't do this, then the Messiah won't come. Now, we're talking a, a plan that God had before the beginning. These girls have, see, that's how we get into God's business, though, with our plan A, B, and C. 
These girls think if they don't repopulate, then the Messiah won't come. And now, common sense, but I guess maybe not, would tell them your, your uh, Savior is going to come through you having sex with your daddy? You think? <laughs> but this is their thought. They're going to have sex with their daddy, repopulate the earth so that the Messiah can come through that. And he does because he comes through generations of sin. Don't get me wrong. Not, not him in sin, but generations of sin. Uh, but, I mean, even to have the thought, I'm going to sleep with my daddy so that the Messiah can be born. Their father being a, de uh, a descendant of Shem, a son of Abraham's elder brother, and now remarkably saved from Sodom, which they might conclude it was for this purpose. So that they could have sex with their father and bring forth the Messiah. Because their daddy was saved, he was favored. He was really blessed because of Abraham. <laughs> they knew of no way in which it could be brought about but by uh, this they purpose. This is a remarkable and seemingly desperate sin from Lot's daughters. Some suggest that they believed that the whole world had perished with Sodom and Gomorrah and it was now their responsibility, like God can't take care of his own, but they are, and we do that, we do that. God tells us to do such, such, and we think we can take it on and do it ourselves. You know, you've heard people say, I'm grown, I can think for myself. I'm grown, I can handle my own. Yes, nobody said we're not grown. Except the Lord, because guess what? He always, thank you for the words, calls us his children. You've never seen him say, my man, my woman. No, he says, my children. And so they want to take on the responsibility to repopulate the earth through the Father. However, their belief, time and Zor, was enough to show there were other people, even though Zor was destroyed. Living in the low moral environment of Sodom had a great and harmful effect on Lot's family. Be careful where you pull and drag your family to and through because it can affect. His compromise affect far more than himself. And that's the same thing I continue to say. Sin not only affects you, but it affects a lot of people around you. Just like Lot wife who was disobedient, turn and turn into a pillar. It affect her husband. It affect her daughters. Now look at their mindset and they don't even have a mother to correct it. Be careful of the sin in your life because it will affect others. Share the video, thumbs up, like, and tag. All right. So that ends our lesson for today. <laughs> But I do want to encourage you, be in much prayer about your life, about your plans, because God has everything in, in his hands. And we don't have to make plans. All we have to do is what those girls should have done, consult the Father. And when I say the Father, I'm not talking about the earthly daddy, even though that's good too. Some of our earthly daddies have great wisdom. Mine did. He's not here any longer, but he did. Great earthly wisdom because he believed in the Lord. And so... Anytime I went to my daddy for any type of advice, he would always give me the word. <laughs> always. Always. So I'm not telling you don't consult your earthly father. But I really want to encourage you to consult your heavenly father. Because that daddy would have, could have told him, no, 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 girls. You've seen a lot of fire going down. But it's just been down here in the Jordan. My uncle Abe. Abraham, I can't call him Abe no more. My uncle Abraham, he lives up on the hill. We, we can go and, you know, see him. And in those days, they did have, um, you know, they married cousins. and stuff Because they were still repopulating. And now the earth is so populated, we don't need to marry cousins anymore. There's a lot of people out here. <laughs> so, you know, when the Israelites came about, that's when God said, I, 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 I don't need to do that no more. But in, in those days, they were still marrying like cousins and friends and relatives and stuff like that. So, Abra I mean, Lot could have told him, my Uncle Abraham has a whole lot of men up there. Because we 
uh, learned that he took like 300 and something trained uh, soldiers to go and fight to get Lot back when the kings took him. So they, his, their daddy could have told him. But anyway, uh, share the video, like, thumbs up. Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, hear me up before you to say thank you, Lord. We thank you once again for your word because your word is true. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to speak to us, dear fathers, to tell us great and mighty things that we know not of. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you're leading and guiding and directing our lives and you're teaching us how not to intervene and get in the midst of things, but allow you to be God and over everything. And we'll be so careful to say thank you. We love you and praise you and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There may be someone who doesn't know Christ as that personal Savior. And while the saints are praying for you, today would be a good day for you to surrender your life to Christ. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So I'm just going to ask you today, as the saints are praying for you, because we know somebody prayed for us, and I'm so grateful. But I want to encourage you, um, I mean, I want to ask you, do you believe that Jesus lived on this earth? He died on the cross. He rose and he's coming again. I want to encourage you. I really want to encourage you uh, to pray this prayer after me if you believe those things. Because it says, confess with your own mouth. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you. To receive me as your own. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. If you prayed that little prayer with me. Welcome home. Welcome home. The angels in heaven are celebrating you. We are celebrating you. As you can see the hearts will soon be going. <laughs> but we are celebrating you. We are celebrating you. And uh, we just want to encourage you. To read the word of God on a daily basis. We want to encourage you in that. We also want to encourage you to find yourself a good church home where they're teaching and preaching the word of God on a daily basis. Um, also, if you'd like, you can email me at eternallysecurem633 at gmail.com. As you see, the hearts are going up, and so we're so happy to have you in the body of Christ. Uh, I want to tell you to have yourself a wonderful day in the Lord, a little rainy day. But like I told you, I love rain because I had seed in the ground. I <laughs> uh, also want to tell you I love you with the love of Christ. And guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. Have yourself a blessed day and we'll see you on Wednesday morning, May 1st. <laughs> Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Invite a friend and we'll see you soon. Love y'all. Bye.